about him that makes him so special in those moments? Uh, I, I think it's, it's just his confidence and his fearless mentality. I've been talking about these young guys, but Lucas, um, you know, alongside JT and um, Jalen Brown, you know, a few Trey Young, a few other guys that, you know, I haven't named, but they're part of that that next generation that has that no fear mentality where they'll shoot from the parking lot, man, and <laughs> and it'll look like it's a, a great shot, you know, because they've been practicing it since they were young. So uh, he's prepared for these moments and uh, he's built for these moments. So uh, when things like that happen, I'm not surprised, but as a brother, I'm just nothing short of proud. On this episode of Inside the Mavs, the Dallas Mavericks are two wins away from the NBA Finals. How they got there, what they need to do in Game 3, and how Luke and Kyrie are driving the Mavericks toward championship success. This is Inside the Mavs. Welcome to Inside the Mavs, presented by Aura. I'm your host, Kevin Gray, Mavericks Free and Post Game host on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me here for the latest episode of Inside the Mavs. Make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast for free. Give it a five-star rating and write a review for it while you're there. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, at Kevin Gray Sports, make sure you like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel as well. And you can follow me on Twitter, at Kevin Gray Sports. The Dallas Mavericks are two wins away from reaching the NBA Finals for the first time since 2011 as they get ready for Game 3 on Sunday, up two games to none after getting their fourth consecutive road win, taking the first two games in Minnesota. Luka Doncic's dramatic three-pointer with three seconds left, cooking Rudy Gobert, gave the Mavericks their 2-0 series lead, and they come back to Dallas with a ton of confidence, looking to take a commanding three games to none lead. On this show today, how the Mavericks got there, what they've done in the first two games against Minnesota to put themselves in position, and why Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, led by Jason Kidd, are playing the kind of championship basketball that has them in position to make the NBA Finals. But for the Dallas Mavericks, continuing to show resilience as they've shown all season long, it was on display once again in Game 2. An 18-point comeback that allowed them to take out the Minnesota Timberwolves, them locking up defensively in the second half, and for the Mavericks continuing to allow the game to come to them, and more importantly, their superstars in Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving playing with the kind of poise and calm down the stretch that gave the Mavericks confidence to be able to win this game despite them being down double digits, as we mentioned, to come back and win against Minnesota. And that is one of the reasons why this team is beginning to have what I like to call the championship DNA. They don't give up on games. They don't quit throughout the course of basketball games. And more importantly, they stick together and they trust each other to be able to make the right play in the situation when it calls for, even when it may not seem that there's a plan in order to do it. This is a team that's playing with a connectivity that championship teams have when they are playing with confidence, trust, and their chemistry is showing on both the offensive and defensive end. You saw the adjustment that the Mavericks were able to make, one of which they made in the second half, using more double drag screens to be able to get guys like Derek Lively and others open for easy buckets at the rim, punishing the Minnesota Timberwolves, especially coming off of free throws. This is a team that has been able to make adjustments throughout the course of this postseason, whether it be in the Clippers series, whether it be in the Thunder series, and now in the first two games against the Minnesota Timberwolves where the Mavericks absorbed what was a terrific punch from Minnesota. They came out with a lot more energy, a lot more aggression, and you saw that they wanted to get downhill on the Mavericks to create opportunities at the free throw line. But the Mavericks were able to continue to lock up what was Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards when you look at what they did in game two. Anthony Edwards going what was five of 17 from the field. Carl Anthony Towns going four of 16. So we're talking about a combined nine of 33 from the field between Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards, the primary scorers 
for Minnesota. Yes, Nas Reed had his seven three-pointers and had 23 points, but he was really the only reason why offensively the Timberwolves were able to stay in that game. There was a tweet from Dave McMiniman talking about how at one point Anthony Edwards was so tired he had to go get an oxygen mask to be able to collect his breath to be able to utilize throughout the course of the game. This is what the Mavericks have done. They continue to wear you down with their athleticism, with their physicality and their toughness, and most importantly, their superstars and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving having been there and done that. If you're watching this group and you're watching the confidence at which they're playing with, the execution at which they're playing with, whether it be the coaching staff, whether it be the players, everyone is dialed in to what needs to be done game in and game out to be able to be in position to win games. We talked about what Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving have done from a superstar standpoint, leading this team on both ends of the floor, coming up with clutch baskets. Kyrie Irving getting things started in that fourth quarter, where, of course, he scored 13 points and was a major driver in being able to help the Mavericks win. Even with missing the two free throws, he made up for it by knocking down the three-pointer and then ultimately setting up Luka Doncic to be able to hit the three-pointer to win the game. But when I talk about being locked in, I'm also talking about this coaching staff, and particularly with Jason Kidd. Two moments that we saw in the fourth quarter where they stole possessions, where they challenged an offensive foul call on Derrick Jones Jr. They were able to overturn the call. They won that challenge to steal a possession. Then with 47 seconds left, Kyrie Irving caused a deflection on Jaden McDaniels. The Mavericks were able to win that challenge after it was initially ruled the Timberwolves ball. That is what I'm talking about here when everyone is locked into the details of trying to win games because when you're trying to win a championship, it's not just about offensive execution. It's not just about defensive execution. It's about locking into the finer details of the game and having an understanding of when to challenge, when not to challenge, when to use your timeouts, when to rest guys prior to timeouts to be able to put yourself in a position to be able to handle your business based on what your the situation is calling for. And Jason Kidd and this Mavericks team have done that consistently throughout the course of this postseason, and you're seeing it on full display right now in the series against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Another example, when you think about what the Mavericks, when they were down 102 to 101, as you're getting to the use it or lose it three-minute timeout, the Mavericks put in a defensive lineup, was able to get a stop. They had taken out Luke and Kyrie to get them some extra rest. They got a stop, and then they were able to call timeout immediately to be able to get that much more rest for Luka and Kyrie to be able to finish out the rest of the game. That's what we're talking about in terms of manipulating the game and making the game towards your favor based on utilizing time management, situation, and understanding of being able to make sure that your guys are able to execute down the stretch and finding different ways to put your players in position to do so. That is what Jason Kidd and his coaching staff are doing right now, and that is why they're in position right now to be two wins away from making the NBA Finals. Much more on this and what the Mavericks have to do going into Game 3 that they've been successful at in the first two games of this series to give them confidence that they can be able to take a commanding three games to none lead. But before we get there, let's hear from today's sponsor of our video and our podcast, and let's hear from Aura. Today's video is brought to you by Aura. Do a Google search on your name and email address to see how much information comes up about you. I was devastated by the amount of information that I could be seeing searching my name and profile, and I knew then I needed to be protected for not just myself, but also for my family. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats that I can't see. It's really easy to set up, so I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on, doing the hard work to protect me and my family so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. 
I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Kevin Gray to start your two-week free trial. Please see the link in the description. Back here on Inside the Mavs, thank you for hanging out with us through that spot, and thank you to today's sponsor of our video and our podcast in Aura as the Mavericks find themselves two wins away from making the NBA Finals for the first time since 2011 after taking a 2-0 series lead, winning the first two games on the road in Minnesota. Thanks to Luka Doncic's game-winning three-pointer, of course, with three seconds left in game two. And as we were detailing how the Mavericks have cultivated a championship DNA to put themselves in position, not just the execution on the offensive and defensive end, but the coaching staff being locked in with time, score, and situation and manipulating the clock to be able to find rest for their guys. This is a team that's utilizing every mechanism to be in this spot, to be just two wins away from making the NBA Finals and what they must continue to do that we've seen so far in the first couple of games. They have done a terrific job of crashing the offensive and defensive glass. In fact, the Mavericks have out-rebounded the Timberwolves in the first two games of this series, which is extremely important when you think about the front line, that the front court, I should say, of Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns and what the Mavericks have been able to do. And look no further, obviously, than Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively II. When you look at their line and their lines in game number two, they combined for 30 points, 14 rebounds, and five blocks in that game, all five blocks coming from Daniel Gafford. But what they were able to do, creating second-chance opportunities, being able to create offense based off of their rim protection and their abilities to finish in pick-and-roll situations where the vertical game was able to get going, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, using the double drag screens to be able to free up Derek Lively for dunk opportunities, this Mavericks front, line, front court, with Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford have been terrific in this series, and they have been the aggressors with their physicality on both ends of the floor. That must continue going into game three. The sense of desperation that the Mavericks played with, not quitting on game two, they'll need that same mentality coming out in game three because we know from Minnesota they are capable of winning games on the road. We saw them do that in their previous series against the Denver Nuggets where they won the first two games in Denver. Yes, they lost the next three to the Denver Nuggets, but at the same time, this Timberwolves team is as talented as they are. They will look to be aggressive once again, much like they were in game two. And for something from Minnesota, they'll look to not beat themselves. But if you're the Mavericks, that's exactly what they're doing right now, which has been key in the first two games, not beating themselves and valuing the basketball, which is another key. We talked about dominating in terms of the offensive and defensive rebounding, but you've also got to protect and value the basketball if you're the Mavericks offensively. In game one, they had 13 turnovers. In game two, they only had 10 turnovers. So you're seeing how much value they're putting into possessing the basketball because against the best defensive team in the league in Minnesota, you cannot give them extra opportunities in terms of extra possessions to be able to try to get out and finish a little bit in transition. You saw what they were able to do with guys like Nasri and Mike Conley, especially in that first half when they went a combined six or seven from the three-point line, and they had 24 points in between them. That can't happen in game three, but the way that you can do that is to ensure that you're closing out possessions with defensive boards, creating yourself second-chance opportunities to steal some possessions and not allowing the Timberwolves to be able to get out in transition. When you look at what they were able to do, Minnesota only had 11 fast-break points in game two. So the Mavericks doing a good job when it comes to their abilities to continue to put pressure on the Timberwolves and not allowing them, more importantly, getting back in transition to not allow fast break opportunities and points. So for the Mavericks continuing to, one, rebound the basketball at a high rate. The production that you're getting from Derek Lively and Daniel Gafford have been huge. Valuing the basketball in terms of not turning it over and continuing to make sure that you're possessing and keeping the basketball and eliminating turnovers. So again, if you're the Mavericks, making sure that you're dominating on the offensive and defensive glass, ensuring that you're valuing possessions in terms of not turning the ball over, just like you did in game two where you only had 10 turnovers. And for Luka and for Kyrie, being the drivers on the offensive end, you've seen what Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving have done, especially in the second half. You saw what Kyrie Irving did 
in that fourth quarter with the 13 points, was able to get things going. Luka Dodges being able to knock down some obvious big shots for this team. And that, to me right now, is the difference when you look at what the Mavericks have established in terms of what we've been discussing and mentioning over and over and over again, which is championship DNA. You've got two superstars who have been there, done that. Luka Doncic in terms of making a Western Conference final run already. Kyrie Irving as an NBA champion who's back in the conference finals for the first time in seven years, leaning on their experience to be able to allow the game to come to them. And you're seeing that for the Mavericks because right now they've got two guys that can go get it for you in crunch time. The Timberwolves only have one in Anthony Edwards, and you've seen how well the Mavericks have done against him defensively so far in this series. You mentioned a little bit earlier in terms of the numbers. Anthony Edwards in game two in 40 minutes going five of 17 from the field. And yes, while early on he was attacking, getting downhill, the Mavericks were able to make the adjustment into the second half and be able to make things difficult for him. So moving forward, going into game three, much more of the same. Remain aggressive in terms of making sure that Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards aren't getting off offensively, making sure that you're closing out possessions with your rebounding, valuing the basketball, but also, most importantly, executing in the half court on the offensive end and leaning on your superstars and Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving to be able to put you in position to win going into the fourth quarter. And again, when we talk about championship teams and what it looks like in terms of their, their profiles, they play well on the defensive end, they don't beat themselves, and most importantly, they are able to physically and mentally dominate their opponents, and we are seeing that from the Mavericks. They have a chance now, by going up potentially three games to none, to absolutely demoralize the Minnesota Timberwolves. And when you're in this position, you cannot take it for granted. The Mavericks will see a desperate Timberwolf team in Game 3. The Mavericks must match that same intensity and desperation for themselves to potentially take a three games to none lead. And if they can, they are the better team. There always comes a point in a series where you realize who the better team is. And while for some Minnesota fans, they may feel like their team is beating themselves right now with turnovers. You saw the turnover that Anthony Edwards had with 12 seconds left, tried to hit Nas Reed on the three-point line. Ultimately, teams do not make those kinds of mistakes in the clutch, down the stretch, in the big moments, in the championship moments. Your team and the Dallas Mavericks are not making those mistakes right now, and that is driving the confidence that they continue to play with, knowing they've got two closers and Luka Dodge and Kyrie Irving who can win games for you based on their offensive abilities and being the team that they have been on the defensive end, continuing to play with that physicality and that mentality. The Mavericks have now in position to be two wins away from making the NBA Finals. So for this team... All they have to continue to do is be who they are and play the game that they're capable of, which is defending, rebounding, getting timely shot making, and hopefully you get a little bit more when it comes to your bench as well. And You look at the game for the Mavericks, they got 27 points off the bench. One of the things that I loved about game two and some of the things that we're continuing to see in the postseason, Jason Kidd pressing the button of Jaden Hardy, and he continues to make plays, whether it be out of the short roll, in the pick and roll, finding guys in terms of lobbers, in terms of Daniel Gafford and Derek Live the second finishing at the rim. Jaden Hardy has been extremely good playing off the bench, playing with some control in terms of his playmaking and making the right reads and decisions. Again, these are the kinds of things that you see from championship teams, unexpected contributions from role players, but most importantly, your coach having an understanding and a feel for what needs to happen in these games. Jason Kidd talking about some of this when we talk about the last play of the game, obviously for the Mavericks to be able to win and the trust that he has in his superstars and his team, even when there necessarily isn't seen to be a plan there, Jason Kidd knows exactly what he wants to see. And this is a great example of it when he was talking about the shot that Luka Doncic hit to win the game. Jason, just going into that last play, was the plan to go for the win and not even to play for overtime or was the plan just to get the best shot available? Now you got to ask Luca that. Um, <laughs> the, the play was to get Luca the ball 
um, and let Luca do what Luca does in those moments. And that's, you know, if he 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 has trust with his teammates, if they were going to come and hit him, he he knew who he was going to find to to knock down a shot. Uh, we talked about taking a two. Uh, we're we're only down two, um, but when he got to dancing with um, Gobert, you could see that the step back was coming, and 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 the rest was history. So for the Mavericks, one thing that they'll need to continue to do that's been personified by a player in Josh Green who played 21 minutes in game two is that you've got to win the 50-50 balls. You've got to make the hustle plays to put yourself in position. Josh Green, who, yes, had five points in game number two, was a plus 15 for the Dallas Mavericks. And I use him as an example because when you get into these deep playoff runs, You've got to find ways to create energy and hustle even when things aren't going well. And you're sapping the energy of Anthony Edwards. I mentioned a little bit earlier how Dave McMenamin of ESPN was discussing how Anthony Edwards had to use what was an oxygen tank to be able to get some extra air. In fact, I want to read it for you so I make sure that I have it right. During the time Anthony Edwards was checked out of the game from 7.53 to 5.31 remaining in the fourth quarter, the Wolves guard put on a face mask to receive oxygen in the tunnel by the Minnesota bench. So not only are you tiring Anthony Edwards from a physical standpoint, but also from a mental standpoint as well, having to deal with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, that is summing up how the Mavericks right now are playing against Minnesota, beating them physically, mentally, and constantly putting the pressure on them to try to have to defend them and on the defensive end, getting into Anthony Edwards and making things difficult for him. He has not been there in this situation before. Carl Anthony Towns and others have now are experiencing this for the first time. And in some ways, you're seeing that experience play itself out, again, based on the poise and the calmness at which the Mavericks are playing with. You've seen the example from the regular season. This team was 23-9 and nine in the clutch. That gave you and I indication that they were never going to get flustered. They would continue to stay with the game and allow the game to come to them. And most importantly, their opponents know that as well. So what that does is if you're a Mavericks team playing with that kind of poise and that kind of calm and that demeanor, that puts pressure on your opponent to have to do the same. And it forces them into making uncharacteristic mistakes because they know that you aren't going to beat yourself. And that's exactly what we saw in game two. The Mavericks did not beat themselves down the stretch, forcing pressure on the Timberwolves to make the right plays and the right reads. And when it came down to it, the Timberwolves simply couldn't do it. And that is the difference that we're seeing right now in this series. The Mavericks' ability to play in those moments versus the Timberwolves' inability to do so. And that is why the Mavericks right now have the 2-0 series lead that they have because they are the ones that are mentally locked in to making every play making every rotation, and communicating on every single play, both offensively and defensively, and executing that at a higher level than what the Minnesota Timberwolves are doing right now. And you give Jason Kidd and this team credit for being able to do that and doing so on the road in a hostile environment in the first two games of this series. That should give them that much more confidence coming back to the American Airlines Center for Game 3 beginning on Sunday that they can be the ones with this home crowd behind them to again be able to execute at an extremely high level to put pressure on Minnesota to have to be perfect and execute themselves because if they don't, they'll find themselves down 0-3 and not coming back and winning this series. I mentioned a little bit earlier, there's always comes a point in a series where you know who the better team is. I know who the better team is right now in this series, and it's the team that's up two games to none halfway to the NBA Finals, and it's your Dallas Mavericks. The question will be now for the rest of this series going forward, will the Mavericks play their brand of basketball and execute to the level at which they're capable of? And if they do, the Timberwolves are not going to win this series. That is where we are. That is where I am. And that's how you should feel based on what you've seen so far in the first couple of games. While the Timberwolves can say that they beat themselves and have put themselves in position to not make the plays that they're capable of, it's the Mavericks forcing them into those mistakes based on what they're doing in terms of their execution, both offensively and defensively, and putting the fear of God in them with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving knowing what their offensive prowess is by the time you get to the clutch moments of these games. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the difference right now in this series between the Dallas Mavericks and the Minnesota Timberwolves. If that continues, 
the Mavericks are going to go to the NBA Finals. And I can say that with a ton of confidence. You and I have watched enough basketball to know exactly how these things can go. When a team like this is brimming with confidence, now having won six games on the road, four straight games on the road, and now have put themselves in a position where they've won four straight games overall in the postseason, this Mavericks team is playing with unrivaled confidence right now, and as they should, because they got two guys that are leading the charge and have put themselves in position to be two wins away from reaching the NBA Finals. I sound like a guy with a lot of confidence and a lot of excitement, as you and I should be, based on the way that this team appears, appears to be a team of destiny based on what they've done so far in this postseason. And that's been comeback after comeback, win after win, road win after road win, moment after moment that has now got themselves in this spot and now have put all the pressure on Minnesota. The Mavericks did the hard part by getting a split at minimum. They got even more greedy and were able to take the first two games in Minnesota. How much more locked in will they be going into game three to really put the position on the Timberwolves to be forced to find a way to get this series back to Minnesota? Because if you win game three, it will be hard pressed for me to see Minnesota taking this series back to their own building and trying to extend this series. That is what's on the line in game three. Can you mentally break the Minnesota Timberwolves? And you'll say, Kevin, that's going to be very difficult to do. And it will be difficult to do because they just knocked out the reigning NBA champion, Denver Nuggets. But one thing that has been the difference in this series among many so far, what the Phoenix Suns and what the Denver Nuggets did not have that the Mavericks do have is a physical interior presence that's relentless with Daniel Gafford and Derek Lively II. That, to me, right now is the difference because they will continuously find ways to bring physicality, to bring toughness, rim protection, shot blocking, relentless offensive rebounding. Those two are bringing it on that on both ends of the floor. And when you've got P.J. Washington doing the kind of job that he's been doing on Carl Anthony Towns and the defense at which he's playing him with, you have a recipe for also a guy like Derrick Jones Jr. to play the kind of defense that we're seeing him play on Anthony Edwards. This team is locked in in every single area that they need to be to be in position to win this series. Now the question is, can they finish it off and take it by hopefully getting a game three win and then really putting the pressure on Minnesota to try to find a way to extend this series? But it will be difficult. It will be tough. And I expect Minnesota to be able to come out again with that much more aggression in game three to see if they can try to extend this series. But the Mavericks have developed a championship DNA led by their precocious superstar and Luka Doncic, who at 25 years of age continues to shut up the rest of the league with his play on the floor, the constant triple doubles, the big time shot making, making the right reads and plays for his teammates time and time again, putting that much more on the Timberwolves to have to do the same. And they are not responding right now. Luka Doncic is driving this team to an NBA championship and the supporting cast that's around him are each playing their role perfectly to be able to be in this spot right now to capitalize on what is looking like a championship team going forward for the rest of this postseason. I don't care who they come up against in the NBA finals if they happen to get there, but they've got to find a way to finish it off here against the Minnesota Timberwolves. And if they do so, whether it be Indiana, if they make some kind of miraculous comeback, or the Boston Celtics, who have been the best team in the Eastern Conference all year, you should have confidence that no matter what situation the Mavericks find themselves in, they can find a way to win a game because of all the things that we've talked about that they got to execute on in game number three. Mavericks taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves game three, Sunday night, 7 p.m., I'll have the pregame show on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network at 6.30 p.m. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports for all things Dallas Mavericks. They'll have shoot around in the morning on Sunday, so you'll make sure you follow me there for all of your extended coverage for the Dallas Mavericks on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Woo! It's exciting times for your Dallas Mavericks right now, ladies and gentlemen, and they are up two games to none in the Western Conference Finals, looking to get back to the NBA Finals for the first time since 2011. That'll do it for this episode of Inside the Mavs. I appreciate you joining me here 
on Kevin Gray Sports here on YouTube. Make sure you download and subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast for free. Give it a five-star rating. Write a review for it while you're there. Make sure you like and comment on the video and subscribe to Kevin Gray Sports on YouTube and follow me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports as well. This has been Inside the Mavs presented by Aura.